Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our time of equipping. Uh, we are going to go right into the Word of God. It's always a blessing to come to you guys and equip the body of Christ. And let's see here. You should be able to, hopefully you guys are able to, there we go. Okay, I couldn't see myself. Not that that's necessarily important, but I want to make sure that you guys can, can see. Okay. All right. So I know other people will be connecting in here in a minute. Um, but we've been talking about given, giving, excuse me, giving within the kingdom of God, and uh, we have both of those. Where this is our third week of talking about giving within the kingdom of God, as well as we'll talk, we'll be talking about stewardship in the kingdom of God as a citizen in the kingdom, uh, which is very, very important. Um, both of those teachings from the past two weeks are available to you, uh, both you as well as study through and share with other people about giving. Now we uh, specifically started talking about uh, the tithe and I took you guys and I should talk to you about the tithe from uh, where it says Abraham tithe to Melchizedek. Um, we talked about that, kind of ironed out some of the misconceptions about that in that Abraham did indeed tithe uh, from or to uh, Melchizedek uh, but it was not on his income. It was on the spoils of war. And in that, he gave 10% to Melchizedek uh, and 90% went back to Sodom. Uh, he did not want any of the spoils of war for himself. So to say that we tithe on our income based on that doesn't hold a lot of water because it was not income that Abraham had. It was a one-time event where he had spoils of war. Okay, then we talked about Jacob, where Jacob said he would tithe or give it, give 10% to the Lord. But that also, and this was before the law, that was simply where Jacob was saying, if you bless me, then I will tithe. So Jacob put stipulations on him tithing or giving 10% unto the Lord, only if the Lord would bless him. So Again, you can't use that um, as a means to support the the, the tithe, uh, you know, within the kingdom of God or within the new covenant. Uh, I talked in detail, although you could probably always extrapolate more about the curse that we find in the book of Malachi, where uh, Malachi says that you've robbed God, and they said how, and he said in tithes and offerings. I showed you how that was specifically speaking to Israel, who the, the nation that was under the uh, obligation and commanded to give 10%, um, and that the curse, uh, you know, that 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 where it said, he said you're robbing from me, he was speaking specifically to Israel, and more importantly, he was speaking to the priests that were robbing, not necessarily the people. So uh, we talked about that. Uh, I talked about how the tithe was uh, Israel's national uh, way of taking care of the tribe of Levi, as well as the priest, and, and how to back then give the tithe. Um, the tithe would only go to Levi, it would not go to others, and there were stipulations on the Levites. They could not own land. Um, they had to tithe on the tithe. So in other words, the, the, the Levi had to, again, tithe or give basically 10% of 10%, which would be 1%. Um, and they were not doing that. That's why they were cursed with a curse, okay? Um, the only thing that could or should be tithed on back then was cattle and crops. It never included one's income or money or coins or whatever, you know, gold, silver. That was not to be tithed on, okay? So where they're saying, you know, tithe on your money, it doesn't hold a lot of weight. There's too many holes in it, and quite frankly, to try to cross, for, from try, trying to do it from an Old Testament perspective is difficult, but certainly trying to cross over into the new uh, is a major, major problem, specifically when we know the Old Testament uh, and the law of Moses was fulfilled by Christ, and in Hebrews, it says that it's over with. We, we no longer are operating under that dispensation or that covenant. We are now in the kingdom of God, age without end or world without end. Um, I also have shown you 
in detail that there is nowhere that Jesus ever, ever commanded uh, the believers of the church to tithe. Uh, I showed you in Matthew 23 when Jesus said, this you ought to have done, but let to leave the other undone, is not spe specifically telling us to tithe. He was uh, rebuking the religious leaders of that time. He was also, Jesus himself, walking the earth during the old covenant. The new, the new did not come in until he ascended to the Father. And the judgment upon apostate Israel took place in 70 AD. And you have what's called the coming or the parousia of the Lord, where he would come and he would come and he would sit on the throne of his father, David, sp spiritual throne, and now is seated at the right hand of God. Okay. Um, I talked about the apostles never talked once and told the early church to tithe. The disciples, we never see any indication where they went to the temple to tithe. There was absolutely no talk about believers tithing. And then last week, uh, I showed you how, or told you how, modern-day tithing got reactivated. And I initially told you about how back in 500, I believe it was 500, uh, 570 A.D., thereabout, where the Catholic uh, leaders got together, and they said that they were going to reinstitute a the tithe uh, across, you know, their churches so that their clergy could have support and do what they would have the clergy to do. So they basically took an, took a law off the shelf, as it were, from the old, and reinstituted that among their uh, their followers. And much of what we do today in Christianity is based based out of Catholicism. More importantly, um, in in more modern uh, in more modern days, in at the turn of the 19th century, okay, uh, so that would be in the late 1800s. A, uh, a ministry, the Wesleyans down in Cincinnati, Ohio, of all places, uh, had they had need for funds to do some of the things that they were doing, and they felt that what they would do is they would reinstitute the tithe as well. And of course, from a, from a modern day perspective, you have the Catholic doctrine, as it were, and then you have this thing that took place, um, almost like a revival of the tithe from Cincinnati, and it got us to the point where we are today. Okay, and now you have a lot of preaching about the tithe. Um, it's they, they tell people they're cursed if they don't tithe, and so on. So we've been talking about this, and I really believe that it was, it was nice that we, you know, kicked the tires. Um, I've put some things on Facebook about this. Obviously, there's always resistance because people have a hard time changing. People have a hard time hearing uh, things that does not, you know, does not line up with their. Uh, what they were indoctrinated with in their religious church or religious culture or whatever. I'm not saying these are bad people, but people have a hard time understanding the new. And, of course, the kingdom of God is the new. So people have a hard time doing it. And they'll always gravitate to, you know, Hebrews where it talks about Melchizedek and how Jesus is after the order of Melchizedek. And because Abraham tithed to Melchizedek, that somehow, again, we should be tithing here in the New Covenant and in the Kingdom of God. But again, uh, Abraham tithed the spoils of war, so that means you're going to have to go out and take somebody else's money and tithe off that. You, Abraham did not tithe off of what was his. It was the spoils of war, or it was taken from somebody else. In this case, it was taken from those who he went to war to and immediately given over there. So if you really want to teach that thing, you're going to have to follow all aspects of it. So it wasn't his assets, it wasn't his income, uh, it belonged to somebody else, and he took it. Um, also, uh, you would have to say that on, you only give 10% to the Lord, and you keep the 90%, which goes against the, the kingdom of God that says God owns everything, God has everything, and God wants everything. He wants all of you. He doesn't want 10% of you. Um, he doesn't want you t t uh, uh, tithing 10% of your income, nor does he want you tithing 10% of your life. He wants all, 100%. God is not going to share. He's a jealous God. He's not going to share. And again, what we give unto the Lord and unto the king and his kingdom is 100%, not 10%. Again, the 10% was a, it was a was was specific to a nation that God was using to have his covenant and the king to come through that nation. And it was designed so that the priest, 
uh, and the tribe of Levi would not uh, have to work, but they can attend to the things of the temple um, and so on, okay? Um, also, uh, we see in that scripture about Melchizedek that it says uh, that um, that Abraham, okay, in that Abraham tied to Melchizedek, um, that basically through that, because Levi would come out of the loins of Abraham, that Levi paid tithes as well. So people will say that and say, see, Levi paid tithes as well through Abraham tithing, so therefore we have to continue with that. But again, another gap. He said Levi or the Levites paid tithes or the priesthood paid tithes. So even if you went that route, it's speaking specific to one tribe, not all of Israel, and certainly not speaking to New Covenant believers. The Gentiles were never, ever instructed to follow Mosaic law. They were never, ever instructed to tithe, go to the temple and tithe. There were, those demands were never put on them, as well as none of the other demands of the Old Testament, okay? Uh, the point to Hebrews chapter 7, if somebody ever went there with you, is simply this. In context, it's not speaking of the tithe. That's not the, that's not the, that's not the context of the text. The context, uh, content of the text is that Jesus is the greater one. That's the key, that Jesus is the greater one, okay? So, that, that should have cleared some things up for you. I'm not saying you don't have some other questions. Um, you probably do, and that's fine. We certainly want to talk about that. But now that we've gone there, and again, I, I want to be very clear. I'm not saying that I'm against the tithe or giving one giving 10% of their income. If that's what you uh, are, are led to do, you certainly need to do that. Um, I believe tithing is a principle of God, but it is not a commandment of God to the New Testament church, okay? That's all I'm saying. So if somebody says, well, you're against giving 10%. No, I'm not giving against giving 10%. I'm against false doctrine. And it's my desire that people get free because so many people are in bondage to what they've heard and they don't want to be cursed. So now people give 10% and uh, they're following the law of Moses, which is not going to yield the blessings. We're blessed by the grace of God when we operate by faith. And when you give, giving is a concept of faith. Giving is not a, a, a concept of following the law, okay? Giving is a concept of or, or a byproduct also of faith. So what we're going to talk about today, okay, is we're going to talk about giving within the kingdom of God, giving within the kingdom of God or giving in the New Testament, okay? Um, now, I want to be real clear. Just because we live in the kingdom of God and we operate within the kingdom of God, we're citizens in the kingdom of God, and we're in the new covenant age, does not mean that we have been released somehow from giving and being held accountable to give. So, you know, sometimes I think people hear me say that, and they're like, well, I'm free and I don't have to give. No, that is not what I was saying. Okay, what I'm saying is the 10% you're not bound to. Okay, um, the Bible is very clear that to, 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 to him who much is given, much is required. Okay, God has, if I was to ask the question, and uh, you know, to the YouTube audience as well as those that are watching live on GoTo Training, if I was to say, Are you blessed? What would be your response? Are you blessed? Has God blessed your life? Okay, if God has blessed your life, then you have, uh, you should, you're accountable to, to give, okay? Too much is given, much is required. So this is not letting anyone off from, uh, from giving, okay? Um, giving unto or into the kingdom of God uh, does not cease or does it isn't warranted simply because the tithe, based on the law of most of the old covenant, is no longer in, uh, in operation. Okay, or or demanded, I should say. Okay, that does not erase giving. As a matter of fact, uh, what you're going to see here is that giving actually becomes more profound, more pronounced, um, and it's going to reflect a lot of things about your life, specifically your heart. Okay, so again, I want to I want to say this: that God does not want 10% 
of your money. What, what, what God expects is he expects 100% of you. And where your treasure is, your heart will be also. So, so what I'm seeing is a lot of penny pinching, stingy believers, Christians, who say they're apostolic, prophetic, you know, believe in deliverance in the kingdom of God, but yet their giving does not line up with that. Even if they tithe, I would say their giving does not line up with that. Okay, there's much more, much more required of us in the kingdom of God because we no longer, it, this is no longer our life. We're ambassadors sent for the kingdom to do what He says, and we need to finance what he's telling us to do, okay? We have the responsibility, and I'm gonna show you in a minute, to support uh, 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 ministry. So God wants all of it. He doesn't want 10% and, oh, give 90 to the world. No, he doesn't want that. He wants 10%. God always wants to be first as well, okay? He doesn't want you giving after everything else. He wants you to give. God is first. Seek first the kingdom and everything is added uh, to you. He doesn't want 10% of anything. He wants 100%. Christ gave 100% and he died. He gave his all for you and he expects 100% of you. He expects all of you, not just a percentage. He doesn't want a percentage of you. He wants it all, okay? Matter of fact, and he doesn't want your money. God does not want your money. God doesn't need your money, okay? But he wants all of you. And if he has all of you, then again, where your heart is, there your treasure will be found as, found as well. So I can say this because I understand it now, and some people don't, and they get offended when I say it, but all you have to do is look at somebody's giving, and you can find out really how, how much they're in love with Jesus. Now, you may be sitting there saying, well, I love Jesus, but I, don't, I only give you know, $10 a, a week, and I make uh, you know, five hundred dollars a week, or something like that. You know, or or I I I I haven't been given at all, but I love Jesus. Well, you need some deliverance in your mind because you're not really understanding the scriptures. Okay, anybody can say they love Jesus. Anybody can say they love God. Anybody can say they're a Christian. The fact of the matter is, is there there has to be fruit that supports your confession. Okay, and one of the fruits is your giving. Okay, giving is fruit of or testifying of your life of who you're in love with. This is why God, Jesus said, you cannot serve God and you cannot serve mammon or you can't serve money. God doesn't want you serving money. He wants you to serve him and allow money to serve you. So we've got to really shift our minds. And this is, this is, you know, this is going to transition into wealth coming to you, by the way. And you, it's going to open up spiritual, spiritually, it's going to open up things so that you can prosper and have wealth. Now that's not what giving is about. But that is a byproduct of it. Giving in the New Testament is primarily about supporting work of ministry so that the kingdom of God can advance. So I want to say this real clear. And I want to say to you that are watching me live, those of you that will watch it later on, okay, because there's a lot of people that do this. They continue to give to ministries that are not preaching the kingdom of God, okay? And I'm telling you, when you do that, I want to be very clear is that you are now aligning your heart with that ministry. You're also now supporting what that ministry believes in, what that ministry teaches, what that ministry is doing, their vision and everything. And when you do that, you may be financing Satan's work, an antichrist spirit. You may be financing wrong doctrine. So you're going to have to be very, very careful. You're going to have to be very, very deliberate and specific and very, very prayerful of where you sow seed, okay? Now, you need, to, you need to sow seed, but you're also responsible for where you place that seed. And I don't care what, you know, how they tell you you should come and bring it and, and what what will happen to you. Your job is to sow in the right places, and that's only, only, only in places that are doing what the Father said to do, not one element of it. Okay, so you may like a certain element, like let's say they're preaching faith. You may say, oh, I'm going to finance that because they're preaching faith. But yet in all the other areas, they're anti-Christ and they're anti-kingdom. Okay, now, I'm not saying they're perfect. What I'm saying is, is that their doctrine are doctrines of demons and they're, you know, teaching in these areas that are, that are just an, against the kingdom of God and, and the king. If you finance that, you're just as guilty as them. 
It's like financing a thug or financing a hoodlum or financing a murderer, okay? You may not pull the trigger, but at the end of the day, you are responsible. This is why you need to know that those that labor among you or who you labor among, okay? And give to those kingdom ministries, okay? Now, uh, let's see what Marcy says here. How do you speak with someone who believes by their own experiences that they have been blessed because of the tithe? They say that God always makes a way for them uh, when they are in a financial bind. So they are totally convinced that the tithe that they give uh, keeps them from being in lack. They also have said that when they don't give the tithe, their whole life uh, falls apart, you know, car issues and so on. Well, here's the thing. They can say that, and they're, you know, looking at that, and they're saying, well, what I tithe. And, and again, nobody's saying don't tithe. If, if they tithe 10% and that's what God has said for them to do based on uh, giving within the, the kingdom of God, I have no problem with that. Now if they're saying, no, I have to give a tithe because it says it over here in Deuteronomy. It says it over here in Numbers. And, and, I, and, and, and I know that I'm cursed if I don't tithe. Then again, now you have what's what I call doctrinal, a doctrinal gap. That doesn't line up with the scriptures that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, which includes the curse of Malachi on uh, those that do not tithe. The other thing is I would then challenge them and say, well, are you, if you're following the law of the tithe or the law of Moses, uh, I'm sorry, but you're missing it because you're only giving 10%. And the true law of the tithe or the, you know, the teaching on the tithe is anywhere between uh, you know, 10 to 30%. Also, there's another gap because you have the issue of no, there's nowhere in scripture that ever says that you should tithe on money or coins, okay, or currency. As a matter of fact, uh, we see that you're not supposed to do that. So if they're doing that, then they're in violation of following those, that, that law or principle, okay? Now, again, if they're saying, hey, I give, uh, in generally, I give 10%. And I'm and, and 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 you know that that you know that's what I'm led to do. Fine. I want to say this also. You when you give, or or when you tithe ten percent, it, it's not there to activate a blessing. We have to understand that regardless of your giving levels, you are blessed. Your life is blessed. I think mentally, what it does is when people don't follow religious protocol and and ordinances, in their mind they begin to think I'm cursed. And, and what it what happens is now a spirit of fear comes in and, and phobia and it opens the door to where yeah they will lose jobs they will lose cars uh, you know things will happen and stuff like that um, but it's not it's it's you know that has nothing to do with with God blessing you you're blessed God has blessed you now yeah he's watching your giving but he's not what remember I want I need to say this and you should share this with this person God is not looking at the percentage of your gift God is not looking at the dollar value of that gift. God is looking at one thing. He's looking at your heart. And he knows, based on your heart, how and why you're giving. Okay? So that's what I would share with that person. You know, they're, they're being religious, and you need to share with them, you know, this is not what it's about. It's all about, uh, about the heart. But there's people that will say that. And, you know, I tell people, look, if you want to keep giving 10%, you give 10%. But check your heart, okay, and understand why are you giving the 10%. That's the real issue. Why are you giving 10%, okay? Um, Lewis says, you also align yourself to the curse of that belief system that could be antichrist that you're giving to. Doors could possibly open and doors could open up and doors to the giver without discernment to what they're giving to. I, I agree 100%. That, that's exactly what I'm saying. So, so anyway, so we need to give, okay? Uh, we need to give, and you can see within the New Testament, I mean, if you, oh, I would encourage you read Acts chapter 2, read Acts chapter 4. You're going to find the believers, the church, what we should be doing today, giving and sowing, and, and it's so their, their generosity was just unbelievable. I mean, the, the, the amounts, uh, you know, the generosity they had, how they opened up their heart, and and out of all that generosity that's mentioned in that they sold property and took the money and laid the money down at the apostles' feet to distribute to the, 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 the ecclesia, the church, 
so that the church could do, go and do the work of ministry, okay? Uh, nowhere there, you, you, again, you don't see anything in that where they're talking about tithing as a standard. Now, in the kingdom of God, there is a standard, and it's called giving and support, or giving to support, okay? And that's what we need to talk about. And and, and again, we'll, we'll look, we're going to look at a couple scriptures today, but I'm going to give you some other places to look at. In Philippians 4, uh, 10 through 20, you're going to see that that Paul, okay, uh, he talks to the Philippians, uh, the Macedonians, and basically he, he, he tells them, uh, you know, that they demonstrated a tremendous work in giving specifically to his ministry and what his apostolic journey required, okay? So you'll see that, but again, you don't see anything about the tithe. Um, in 2 Corinthians, specifically, we're going to look at these chapters 8 and 9, you see Paul talking about the standards on, on an extensive teaching about how we as believers. But I find it odd that both in, in, in 2 Corinthians as well as Philippians, as well as Timothy, as well as 1 Corinthians and so on, out of all the places where there's extensive teaching about giving, that there's not one remote discussion or instruction about the tithe. It's it's completely withdrawn. It's completely eliminated, which again says that we're, we have, we're under no obligation to tithe. Okay. So let's, you know, let, let's, let's take a look at some things. Okay. Uh, and let's go to second Corinthians chapter number. Uh, let's go to, we'll start at second Corinthians chapter number eight. Okay. And let's look at the new Testament or the kingdom standard of giving. What is the standard of giving? What are we supposed to, you know, are we supposed to give a certain amount, How, you know, at a certain day, a certain time? Are there different styles, different ways of doing it? How, how are we to give as citizens of the kingdom of God now that we've eliminated or ruled out or pushed, at least pushed aside, the religious traditional view? And, and by the way, I'll even add, I'll say this, the religious traditional and racist way of give, giving. I believe tithing based on the law is a racist way of giving. Now, don't think in terms of black and white, but think in terms of nationality, okay? So I believe it all comes under that umbrella of tradition, religion, and racism. So let's go into uh, 2 Corinthians, okay? Again, 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. Now I'm going to be reading out of the New Century Version, and we're just going to, again, kick the tires. We're going to have some dialogue. I'll look over here and see if anybody has their hands up and has a question, or... Um, you know, there's there's something that you uh, would like to uh, share in the in the comment field or the chat thing, uh, the chat box here. You can um, you can you can uh, type that in. So let me just read here. New English, uh, excuse me, New Century Version uh, is what I'm using here today. It says, and this is Paul's letter to the Corinthian church. Okay, a, a, a church filled with Gentiles. Okay, um, he says, now brothers and sisters. We want you to know about the grace of God, about the grace that God gave the churches in Macedonia. That's what you'll see over in Philippians, by the way. That they have been tested by great troubles. We all have troubles, right? And they are very poor, okay? So this is even saying that they were, they were poor. Now, they, they didn't have a lot. They didn't have a lot, all right? But it says, but they gave much. So even though they didn't have a lot, they gave much. So right there... You know, you you kind of you kind of see Paul immediately say it, it's not based on you being poor. It, it you give much because you're going to give a hundred percent. You're going to give out of your heart. You're going to give based on your love for Christ. And he says, uh, but they gave much. Why? Because of their great joy. Now this is going to connect into that God loves a cheerful giver. So one of the things that you have to have is the right attitude first so that you can give for the advancement of the kingdom of God. If your attitude is bad, and you're like, oh, I got to give 10%, or oh, I got to give 20%, God told me, oh, God told me to give 100%, God told me to give $200. If your attitude is bad, or if you're thinking, oh, I got these bills to pay, you can forget it. Hold it. You can forget it. Okay? You have a bad attitude. And if it's Sunday, you have a sunditude. That's what that's what that is. You need to just forget it. You're you're, you're messed up. You're jacked up. Your your whole thinking needs to change. Okay? So he says uh, they had great joy. He goes on to say in verse 3, uh, I can tell you that they gave as much as they were able and even more 
even more that they could afford. And he said, and no one told them to do it. So no one person prompted them. It wasn't where they were in a gathering and people said, if you give $100 or we need you to dig deep into your pockets or whatever terminology that the modern day religious church uses, they, it, it says nobody told them. So this means, watch this now, this means that the Holy Spirit was speaking to them. Isn't that an amazing concept? And they were actually in tune or aligned to hear what the Holy Spirit was saying. And I can guarantee you that these people were taught and trained and equipped in the things of the kingdom. Because if they weren't, they would probably be saying, I give it, I'll just give my 10% and I'm good. Well, 10% to somebody that only makes $100 is $10. And they say, whew. I got away with only $10, okay? Uh, but when the Spirit of God is speaking, again, you're, you're, there's, there's much more expansion, and it's going to be based on what the Spirit of God is leading people to give at that time, okay? So then he goes on to say uh, that, uh, that they gave much more than they could afford. No one told them to do it, but they, watch this now, verse 4, it says, but they, the people of God, the citizen of the kingdom, they begged and they pleaded with us. Who's us? The, the apostle and his team or the apostolic team, those who were doing, you know, traveling, doing ministry. It says, but they begged us and they pleaded with us to let them share in this service. In other words, to let them give. In other, in other words, it wasn't where they were provoked. It was actually the people provoked the giving. The people invoked the giving. It was the people that were saying, hey, we need, we know the kingdom. We understand how the kingdom works, and we're telling you, apostles, and we're telling your team, we're going to give to you. We're going to finance this thing because this needs to happen because the region, the territory, the world needs to hear the good news of the gospel of the kingdom. So it was, it's, it's just the opposite in the kingdom. See, that's what the kingdom is all about. It's actually transverse. It's upside down. It's different than the religious way of thinking where you have to invoke or provoke or compel people to give. This is why Paul's going to later on say, don't, don't, don't give out of compulsion. Don't give uh, based on somebody putting pressure on you. It's all about the people's hearts. And you can tell the people's hearts at a meeting based on the giving. I can tell you every single time. Now you may be sitting there saying, well, they're poor. It doesn't matter. These people were poor. You, so, so again, we're, we're either going to deal with the kingdom the right way or not deal with it all and just go back to religious church and be bound the rest of our life and die broke, busted, and disgusted. Okay? Angry and bitter. That's, that's for that group. That's for that camp. As for me and my house and those that listen to me, I'm speaking to kingdom citizens that want more. Don't you want more? Don't you want, not, don't you want to see the kingdom of God uh, influence the world and the people in it? Don't you want to see your life blessed? Don't you want to see your family blessed? Don't you want to see a legacy? Don't you want to leave a legacy? Don't you want to see the transference of wealth? Well, if so, you're going to have to apply kingdom principles. Okay, you got that? All right, so he goes on. Are you guys okay? All right, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stirred up today because I believe that this is your cross, crossing point. All right, I believe this is a great, you know, strategic time for you to really understand and get your breakthrough in this era, and that we can actually expand the kingdom of God through kingdom ministries and not religious, you know, indoctrination centers and, and, and adult baby centers, okay? No, we ain't doing that no more, all right? So it says that they begged and they pleaded, okay? Verse 5 says, and they gave in a way that we didn't expect. So these people were given, and they, you know, they kind of had a mindset of, well, so-and-so, but these people came in just tremendously tremendously blessed. It says, watch this now. This is going to be key here. Watch the words here. Again, I'm reading out the new uh, century version. Uh, verse number five says, they gave in a way we did not expect. They first gave themselves to the Lord and to us. So that being said here, when you look at this, New Testament giving or giving within the kingdom, hear me, hear, have the ears, spiritual ears to hear what I'm saying. That is New Testament giving or your giving in the kingdom of God is evidence of your commitment to Christ and your passion for his kingdom. I'll say it again. Your giving is evidence to your commitment to the king, Christ is the king, and your passion for 
his kingdom to advance throughout the world, not your agenda. Okay? Uh, this is why I always tell people, and they get offended, but I tell them, I can tell how much you love God simply by what you give to him. Jesus loved the world, right? God, so God loved the world. Well, if you if he loved the world, can you imagine if he said, oh, I love the world and not send Jesus? But it says no. What does it say? For God so loved the world, what, cut, what follows immediately after that? That he gave. You can never separate giving from love, and you can never separate love from giving. I love my wife. I have to give. This is why the Bible says, I'm linking this stuff up for you guys. This is why the Bible says that I must give myself to her just like Christ gave himself for the church or the church being his bride. As a man, you know, just taking, taking it off topic for a minute from finances, as a man, you can't say I love my wife, but yet not give to her. You're of the devil. You're of your father, the devil, if that's the case. Or you've been indoctrinated with some bad religious teaching, or you have a generational curse where nobody ever taught you how to be a man or how to be a husband, okay? You have to give to your wife, okay? Not her give to you. You give to your wife. You make sure your wife is okay. You know, I'm not saying we have our days where we, we look stupid as men and we say dumb things, but that's why our wives get us back in, in control, right? That's why they get us back in order, to help us meet the things God wants us to do as men, okay? This is why even in giving, most most givers are women and men are tightwads. And so women will say, we need to give because they have, they're, they're, what they're trying to do is not get on your, your, your nerves. They're trying to get you back in alignment with the kingdom. So we need to let our wives help us, okay? I'm talking to somebody now, okay? I, I'm also talking to myself because I'm a man and a husband just as well as you guys are, all right? So again, Giving in the kingdom is evidence of your passion, or excuse me, your love for Christ and your passion of the kingdom of God. If you love religion, then your tithe will display your love for religion, and you'll be legalistic. You'll love, you'll love legalism. You'll, you'll say you hate it, but you really end up doing it. You end up complying with it, and when you hear something different, you'll manifest and blow a gas. Okay? Your giving demonstrates the love of your commitment to in your passion for Christ, okay? Now, does that that does that does statement bother you? Does that irritate you? Is something being rubbed inside you that says, ugh, I don't like that? Well, if so, then, again, you need some deliverance, okay? And you can say, we'll, we'll see this, okay? We see this throughout the Word of God, all right? Again, they first gave of themselves to the Lord and then to us, okay? So their giving is clearly an outflow of their commitment to Christ. And once you've given yourself to Christ, giving of your money and possessions becomes natural. How do you give you how did we give ourselves to Christ but say, well, I'm not going to give him my all. I'm certainly not going to give my money. Then you then you didn't give you. Now the question becomes, and I'm not I'm not one to challenge somebody's salvation, but the question is, did you really get saved? Or did you go through the religious, you know, come to the front of the church so you miss hell, give the sinners prayer, and now go on with your business? No. The, that's Jesus. That's why Jesus never preached like that. He never said, you need to give your life to me or else you're going to hell. No, he said, he said to enter the kingdom of God, to enter this form of government, to enter this country, to enter this unseen realm— to enter into my Father's house, you must be born again. So we have to understand what the born again experience is about. It's not about missing hell. It's not about it's not about you. It's about entering the kingdom of God and becoming His son and an ambassador sent from that kingdom to take dominion, authority, and and speak His word. How are you going to speak His word? How are we going to get His? How are we going to get the kingdom message out there? Unless it's finance. Now, religion's message is out there. 42 denominations message is out there. Christianity's message is out there. Uh, uh, Islam is out there. Um, Hinduism is out there. Buddhism is out there. But it's all out there because it's being financed. Okay? It's being financed within the world and within the cultures and subcultures of this world. So ask yourself the question, is the kingdom, is what you're hearing me and others as it pertains to the kingdom, Mainstream? No. Why is that? Because the money 
the giving is being funneled to religious church through a bad teaching of the tithe, and here we sit, and you get five, ten, and twenty dollars that comes in, and you're, you, what are you going to do with that? Okay, but the hundreds and the thousands and tens of thousands, and you all know what I'm saying, because I can I can mention names of people that say that, goes there, and therefore their word, which is called another gospel, is being preached. Now you may be saying, well, they're preaching the apostolic, they're preaching the prophetic, they're talking about deliverance. I don't care. What is the foundation? Is the foundation in what's really being preached the kingdom? Because we're not called to preach the apostolic. I keep telling folks this. That is a dimension that we teach, but that's we don't teach, preach the apostolic. We don't preach the prophetic. You do the prophetic. You are the prophetic. The church is prophetic. Deliverance is a byproduct of the kingdom and a man manifestation or a demonstration of the kingdom, but you don't sit there and just preach deliverance and teach everybody about demon names. Who cares what the demon's name is? Everybody knows the demon's name, but nobody's free. So we buy the books, we get the encyclopedia, we got all this stuff, and I'm not saying don't buy it, I'm not saying don't get it and study it. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we focus all on that, so we know Leviathan and Python, and we know Apollyon, and we know we know, we know witchcraft, and we know sorcery, we know all that stuff, but, but we're jacked up, and nobody has any money. And the kingdom just sits there, and, and, and God's saying, what's going on here? So we need we need a, a, a refreshing. We, we don't need a revival. We need a cleansing. We need a flush out. Flush the toilet. I wish I had that sound here. Just flush the toilet and get all this scum, this toxic waste, and septic, uh, narcissistic preaching out of here and begin to preach the kingdom of God. Okay? You, you with me on that? So, again, uh, you know, it becomes natural to you as a kingdom citizen to give. So when people don't give, and I know people, there's people probably on this list not giving anything. Or or give, they gave six months ago, now they don't give anything. Where are you? Where's your head? Where is your head? What are you, what are you doing? Are you give, do you understand the kingdom? I can tell you that answer. Probably not. Okay? Probably not. Or you can say, no, I'm, 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 I'm prideful. Well, get out of pride. Pride comes before destruction. Oh, I'm in fear. Well, that's because you're a bad manager, and then you won't learn how to get your finances together. You won't listen to somebody like me who understands how to get your finances together. Okay, you won't you won't pay the eighty dollars to take that class, but you'll sit back and say, I'm not going to give anything. Not advance the kingdom and all this stuff. But you'll have your Gucci purse. You have your Louis Vuitton. You have your eyes made up. Your nails are super fly, and you have everything else. You have a a, 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 a nice phone, a nice Bible, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you give nothing to the kingdom of God per se. Now, I'm not, now you may say, well, you get on my case. Yeah, you can call it that, perhaps. Uh, my 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 goal is to stir you up to give to the king and understand this. Now, this I really want to to lacerate you in the spirit, in that if you do not give out of the abundance of your heart, it is reflecting your commitment to the kingdom and your love for God. That's plain and simple. So what you can walk away from this teaching, but you know, take that with you is that God, you know, be not deceived. God is not mocked whatsoever a man sows. Oh, that's what you're going to reap. So he knows what you give. I don't need to know what you give. Matter of fact, I like now when I don't know what people give, because I probably get mad. So I don't want to know. Okay. But God knows, and how can you have, how can somebody have, they get, a, let's say they get uh, $500 a week, less taxes, it's $400, and then give $10, $20, or, you know, or $30, and all, how, how do you do that? How, how do you do that? How, how do you justify that saying, well, I love God, he's blessed me with this, I have a great job, and some of you have been tremendously blessed, you have wonderful jobs, you've been, you've increased, you've started here, you've, you're now there, well, I'm going to tell you, we are in a time now with because the kingdom is being preached that 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 uh, bread that he gave you for you to consume and that seed that he gave you to sow when you don't sow it he'll strip the seed no more seed for you okay because you're not you're an eater of the seed you're not a sower of the seed and the Bible expressly says that God gives gives seed to the sower so all these people that say I don't have it to give that you're 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 you're, you're saying to yourself and you're telling the world I don't give I'm not a giver so when somebody doesn't when somebody doesn't says I don't have something to sow it's because your heart is not the heart of a giver if your heart desires to give God will send seed to the sower do you understand what I'm saying 
Okay. Yes. Well, thank you, Michelle. That's what I'm doing. I'm teaching. Yeah, I, I am teaching. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let me see here. Okay. Uh, Marcy, religion preaches guilt and condemnation to manipulate people and fund the dysfunction. Precisely. I agree. But the kingdom preaches truth and liberates the mind from the bondage, and people have a hard time giving aside from the manipulation. I've been saying that for years. Marcy, it, it, Anthony, whoever it is, I've been saying for years that the hardest thing for people today within the church is freedom. They don't know how to handle it. When people come to our ministry and we emancipate them from all the religious bondage and, and tradition and all that other stuff, the hardest thing for them is to actually receive that. A lot of times, if not the majority of people, end up leaving and going back to the religious vomit that they that they regurgitated out. In the and this is the word. This is what the, doesn't the Bible say that to, when you change out old wine skins for the new wine, it says that many will say that the old was better. That they would rather have the and, and, and when it comes to the wine, rather than having new wine, they would typically have the old because they will say the old is better. Why is the old better? Because it's familiar to you. It's familiar to you, and that's what you know. You know, you, you you're you're. It's like slavery in this country. When the slaves were emancipated, when 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 Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation and liberated slavery and abolished slavery from this country, you had slaves, you had people that didn't know how to be free. So they just kind of stay there. It's kind of like the dog that's in a a uh, you know in the yard and they have these invisible fences. They won't they get trained in their mind that they're in bondage, so they never will push past those limits. You could take the, the electricity's turned off by that time. They're not going to get shocked, but they're in fear of the freedom because they think it's like a fish. You can take a small fish in a, in a 10 gallon aquarium and then put them in a 50, you'll see over time, they, they, they will not go past a certain point because they've been conditioned to the slavery or the bondage. And this is what's happening to people in church. I'm and my wife in this ministry, we're trying to free you, okay? So, again, it's hard to preach this, and I understand that to Marcy's point. When I preach this, there is the possibility that people out there don't know how to accept the freedom and will typically say, well, I don't have to give it all. But that's not what we're saying. We're saying you don't own any of it. It's not your, you don't, you don't own it. It's not yours it's all his. Now, he wants you to live. He certainly wants you to be prosperous. But you're not going to get by with him. It's not going to cut the mustard with God that you sit back and say, well, I gave you 10% and I kept the 90 for me. Really? Is that what we think? Well, again, you're either legalistic because now the legalistic system actually attests to your mindset that God's only worth 10%. Really? Is that, is that where we're at? But these are the same people that lift their hands, uh, uh, praise God, tell, get up in front of the church, oh, I just love the Lord, cry, weep, I just love the Lord, prophesy, dance, preach, whatever they may be. And those will be the same people that will take a, a, a $2 bill, $2, excuse me, two, two $1 bills, ball them up and put them on the offer. I mean, come on, this, this, we're, we're smarter than this. We're smarter than this to actually believe all these lies. What else did you say? Yeah, that's why this teaching is necessary. Reset the mind. Exactly. Don't look to be manipulated to give when you're in the kingdom. Precisely. So let's go on. Okay, hopefully you guys are getting something from this today. Let's go on. So it, gets, it says they gave themselves to the Lord, themselves all, not 10%. They gave all to the Lord and then to us. This is what God wants. Verse 6. So we asked Titus to help you finish this special work of the grace since he's the one that started it. He says, you're rich in everything, in faith and speaking and in knowledge and truly wanting to help and in the love you learn from us. Now he goes on to say, so in that, so we could, I could say it this way, hey, you're, you're anointed to preach, you're, you're, you're anointed to dance, you're anointed to prophesy, you have, you have a, 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 a lot of grace, a lot of mercy, you have a lot of love, you're doing wonderful things, you're doing all this stuff. But then, but then in the letter, Paul says, after he admonishes them in that, he says, in the same way, be strong in your giving. Do you see that? So, you know, again, 
I don't, God is not, you know, you could be, like I said, prophesying, you could be uh, waving flags, you can be singing a great song, you could be preaching a wonderful sermon and all this stuff. <laughs> What's in your heart? Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. So God, you know, one of the greatest things is your giving. All this other stuff is a lot of good stuff, but God's saying, what are you giving? So this should challenge you. It certainly is challenging me. It should challenge all of us that when we give, you know, think in terms of love and think in terms of supporting the kingdom rather than anything else. Certainly don't think in terms of, well, I got bills to pay. Really? Don't we all? Don't we all have bills to pay? But God is not, God is not the God of seconds. He's not, he doesn't want sloppy seconds. He is the God of first. Okay? And, and, and they're going to get into this. Paul's going to, he's going to tell every, us about this. Okay? So uh, then Paul goes on, he says in verse 8, I'm not commanding you to give. In other words, I'm not, he's not, he's doing what, what Robert is saying here. I'm not telling you to give 10%. I'm not demanding you give. I'm not commanding you to give. I'm not doing that. I'm not releasing witchcraft on you. You do what you want. That's your will. Okay? Just remember, there's a price for our decisions. Everything is in life is about decisions, isn't it? So he says in verse number eight, I'm not commanding you to give, but I want to see if your love is true. Do you, do you love the Lord? Do you love me? Do, do, you, do you truly have agape love, or are you just religious? Are you just religious? Yeah, I love the Lord, but give nothing. You're religious. You're hypocritical. You're double-minded. You're schizophrenic. You're unstable in all your ways. And it could be you or it could be you know, somebody you know. It could be me. It, it doesn't, I'm just preaching to whosoever. Okay? He says, I want to see if your love is true by comparing you with the others that really want to help. So there is a standard. When we start to, when we start, you see language like this, that's saying there is a standard. And the standard is your heart. And and so again, you know, people pe people that make, you know, thirty thousand dollars a year, but give a hundred dollars in the offering on an annual basis, you're you're missing the mark. Something's wrong with you. You have you have major, major issues. Okay? And you're certainly not showing demonstrating you love the Lord. And quite frankly, I'm not saying it, but the word is saying you probably don't. You certainly don't understand the kingdom. I mean, people go from, and you know, people will 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 give like let's say they give uh, fifty dollars a week, but then they'll go on and buy another car. They'll 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 buy another thing here. They'll take on more obligations, more debt, whatever. And then the first thing they do is immediately reduce that fifty to twenty five. So basically, you're saying your life, which you're idolizing, and the possessions of this world are more important to God. You love that more than God. That's exactly what you said. Now you may be saying, well, yeah, but you don't understand. It, I don't need to understand. This is not about me understanding. Am I preaching? Am I talking to anybody? Or or, 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 or is, is this, are, are you offended? Or have I become the enemy to you because I speak the truth? Do you desire to kill me because I speak the truth? I'm not trying to set you off. I'm not trying to, 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 to get you angry. What I'm trying to do is get you free. And I'm telling you, you, you're going to have to understand that God's, what you sow, you reap. And sowing is, is not just money, but what you sow, you're going to reap. All right? So, so, so when your heart is not there, again, God, God expects you, he's blessed you, he expects you to give. And when you don't give, you know, you're on your own. You basically said, I'm, I'm of my own kingdom. I'm of my own. I'm my own God. So if you've made yourself God, do you really think that God is going to bless you more? Do you really think that God is going to just watch over you and protect you when you've made yourself God? You're basically saying, I don't need God. That's what you're saying. So he goes on to say, uh, you know that Christ was rich, but for you he became poor, so that by him becoming poor you can be re rich. Every believer should be rich. Every believer should be wealthy, but the church, by and large, is poor. It's poor. And most Christians are poor. Well, you know, yeah, Apostle, I make fifty thousand years. Really? Wow. Whip de do. I make a hundred. I make six figures. Really? Where's all the millionaires? Where's all the billionaires? Millionaires. Here, here's how fast millionaires are happening in this country alone today.
Where's the Christians? You know, you get the point, don't you? So then he goes on to say in verse 10, and I'll bring closure to this because we, there's just never enough time, right? This is what I think you should do. Okay, last year you were the first to want to give, and you were the first to give. So now finish the work you started. Then your doing will be equal to what you want to do. This is for all the people that says, well, my heart desires to give. Paul's saying, if your heart desires to give, give. It's You can't say, well, I just want to do it. I'm, I'm there in spirit. God knows my heart. I'm giving in spirit. God knows if I had a little bit more, I'd give. That's your mindset. It's not the mind of Christ. If you, if you desire to do it, it says give. And he says, give from what you have. Now, I'm going to leave you with this, and then I'm going to look at, see if there's any questions or comments. When it says, when, he, when, when Paul says here, give from what you have, our mind immediately thinks, well, I, I got I got a thousand dollar paycheck. After taxes, I had seven eighty or seven fifty or thereabout left over, and I have to pay my rent. I have to pay my car note. I have to do this. I have to buy blah blah blah, blah all this other stuff. Okay, pay my credit cards. Yeah yeah yeah. And then we say, well, I have fifty dollars left. Now most people say, well, let me give ten percent on the fifty and give five dollars. And of course, what does that get you? I don't even know if I don't even think your Starbucks cappuccino with you know no foam and all that stuff probably costs more than that. But when it says when it says here, okay, give from what you have, it's 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 like filing your taxes. When you file your taxes, you don't report to the government what you have left over after your expenses, do you? If you did that, you would go to jail for tax evasion or fraud. Okay? That's what that's what would happen. You don't report, you report on what was given to you. Before tax, so so if I make a hundred thousand dollars a year, it, but after expenses I only have five thousand discretionary income. I don't. That's not my giving pot. Oh my God, that probably really just blew somebody away. Your giving pot is a hundred thousand. Now what you do, how you manage that, but you don't understand, Apostle. They're taking the government's taking my money. That's why I teach people how to uh, 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 shield themselves from taxes like the rich people do. But we don't want to think rich. We want to think religious. So so again, you you it's your your giving is not based on net of 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 expenses. Your giving is based on what God has blessed you with and if your salary is $100,000 or 80,000 or 70,000 or whatever you're at, if it, then that's your giving level. That's what you have to give. You have that to give. So your mind, your mind can't get around that because you're so bound into thinking, well, yeah, but the government's taking money. Then, 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 why don't you do what the world does? This is why Jesus said the the, the, the children of this world are much wiser than those that are in the kingdom because they know how to operate. You don't even know how to operate. But again, you don't want to take the class. What well, couple of you did? Take the class. You know, you think you know it all. Okay. You don't want to ask questions. You don't want to get help from other people. You don't want to invest in you. And this is why everybody is where they're at. This is why the kingdom doesn't advance. You know, because we don't have any wealth. Well, it's got to change, right? Okay. So this, so uh, that's what God looks at. He looks at what's in your hand. Okay. He looks at where your treasure is. So we'll 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 keep going down this vein again. We're talking about how believers should give now. Okay. It's going to get deep. We're today. I mean, our hours basically up. We just scratched the surface. It's going to get deep. And I keep telling people, tithing 10% is not, is not uh, what's the word? It's not, uh, you know, people, they go, oh, I'm giving 10%. <laughs> I, I would laugh at that because God doesn't expect 10%. He doesn't want it. God wants all. So let me challenge you guys today. When you give, and when you give to this ministry, and I've already said it, we need your support. We preach the kingdom. We go out. We're doing what other people are afraid to do. We're, we're, we're going where no man has gone before, quite frankly, okay? Because we're not afraid of the persecution to challenge the religious system. So how do we do that? Well, you're, you're, you're seeing it here. There has to be support, okay? So think think that through and be praying about that. Um, thank you for saying, okay, you all are saying good preaching. Well, th thank you. God bless you, I, and I appreciate your, your wonderful comments. 
Okay, any questions? Um, and thank you for giving me the, the freedom to speak the truth. I appreciate that. Okay. So yeah, and it, and Michelle says it's thought provoking, and it, it it should be thought provoking. You should you see la pause, meditate on these things, study this thing, and again, hear me out, uh, because there's much more to say. Now I'm gonna take you all off mute, uh, because sometimes people don't put their hands up, but they can take themselves off mute if they have a comment or a question. So at uh, this time, you guys are free to, obviously, we've well, been free. But I took you off mute. Um, if you want, if you have something to share, sweetheart, uh, let me see. My lovely wife um, out there, I know you have something that you'd like to share or maybe admonish the people in, uh, but go ahead, whoever, whoever wants to move forward on that, go ahead. Make sure you take yourself off mute. Don't forget that because we... Okay, I'm off mute? Yes. Okay. You know, um, this teaching, I remember um, teaching this years ago, and... Um, the questions of the people were, um, were the, and, and actually some of the um, actual the testimonies were, is that um, one particular lady said that she had been giving 10% at in this particular place, and she said, and um, I never got any return. You know, I was giving, I was so faithful, I was a faithful tither. What happened to my return? What? Ha why didn't? You know, wh why is it that I'm I'm cursed? I'm. It's like I don't I don't have finances and and. Um, and I, I really, I have to go back to the teaching that I, that I do about the soul. It's like, you know, what is, what have you renewed your mind to know that you are blessed? You're not cursed, so you're not trying to give your way out of a curse. You're not trying to give your way out of being cursed, and you're giving. But this, this system, the kingdom system, is based on seed time and harvest. It's based on giving and receiving. But it is a heart issue. Because uh, also, because if you're, you know, if you're giving, even with this law, with the attitude of, um, oh, it's a good example is that if you get up on top of the um, Empire State Building and say, well, I'm going to jump, jump off and I just believe that I'm not going to uh, die when I hit the ground. I believe I'm just going to bounce. You know, there's a law. The gravity is a law. And, uh, and, you, and it's like you, you're, you're trying to defy the law with a mindset of, I'm going to give to be blessed instead of the mindset of I'm already blessed. See, the giving is not to get blessed, which is what I see a lot of people that, that, that follow the tithe do. Now, there are people that follow the tithe that are blessed and that do believe and that, you know, and they're not doing it as, a, as to, be, uh, to not be cursed. They're doing it because they believe they're, they're following the word, okay? And they've been taught, taught this, and so they believe, you know, then they want to give what God says give. But I always said to those that even follow that, I said, well, what if God tells you to give more? You know, that's when they go, oh, I, well, if God tells me to give more, I'll give more. I said, well, then it doesn't make, then you're not a tither. You know, then that, that <laughs> I mean, because tithe means 10%. So if you're not giving the 10% on your grain, on your this, on your that, you know, then you're not following, really following the law. You're following giving, and that's what we're supposed to follow. And that is to give. And I always felt like if my life belongs to him, then everything I have belongs to him. If I died and now Jesus lives in me, then everything I am is, is Christ. So everything I have belongs to Christ. Everything I do should represent him. You know, and that's, that's where my heart is. But I, I really believe, Apostle, what you're sharing this, I think it has a lot to do with the heart of people. You know, and their hearts are, well, I did, I did this and I'm not going to do anything else. And, that, and God's never, ever looked at man in that way. Even with the rich young ruler, when you go back and talk about that again, remember the rich young ruler? He didn't, you know, Jesus said, well, you know, give all you got away to the poor. And he walked away because his heart was he did not, he, everything God didn't have. Although he was trying to say, you know, I kept this, I kept that, I kept that. But his heart, God didn't have his heart. So I think that's what this is showing in this teaching is your heart. Because a lot of people say, well, if you tell them they don't have to tithe, they're not going to they're not gonna give anything. Well, that's where their heart is. You know, so they were doing the tithe, but they weren't doing it from a place of that they're giving it to God because God, they love God and, and they want that everything belongs to him. They were doing it out of duty. They were doing it out of like a law, of a tradition, of following, you know, a man's rules and not, following the word of God. So I just wanted to share that. That's what it's been showing, really been showing me. 
It's my heart. Just teach you. I appreciate that. Anybody else? I, that was that was really good what she she was sharing there. Anybody else? You guys got something to share? Because this affects everybody. Come on, share something. No one. Okay. Okay. Well, let me just let me just close by saying this. I, I really pray that this is blessing you guys. We're gonna, you know, you'll see this thing shift, and it's really gonna it's gonna bless you tremendously. I, I guarantee it. So just kind of stick through the process. Again, I want to remind you, we this ministry, me, and my wife, our team, we are out preaching the kingdom of God. We're going into places that are hard. They're rigid. They're religious. They're traditional. They're racist. We have much more. Uh, you know, if I was to say, if somebody said, well, how much money do you need? I need millions. I mean, for what God really wants me to do, it's yeah. going to require millions. And, and God's going to bless us. It's coming somewhere. I don't know where it's coming from, but but people are going to give to this ministry, and they're going to give abundantly. They're going to give joyfully, and they're going to partner with us, and we're going to do this thing, okay? Um, so whatever God puts on your heart, giving is voluntary. Nobody Nobody's putting a yoke on you to do it. But seek God, ask the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to ask, so, so into this ministry. And you can do that. The link is put out there uh, by, by our administra administrator. You can click on that, and that will take you there. You can simply go to our website, summersministries.com, click on the Donate Now button or, you know, uh, what's out there. You can go to AOTBM, Authority of the Believers Ministries.org, or AOTBM.org, and do the same thing. Please, please do that. We ask for your and that's what it's all about. When we go, you go, because we cannot go without support. So, anyways, I appreciate that. Uh, we'll talk more about this stuff. I really believe that's going to answer a lot of your questions. We have so, so much more to go over, but we've done enough for today. So, until next time, uh, Apostle Robert Summers, and I'm reminding you, as always, to walk in your dominion and authority. God bless you. We'll see some of you tomorrow night. Uh, Tuesday night or Wednesday night or whenever we next meet. God bless you. Share this with others. We love you. Goodbye.